And now here's your host, Tony Fiorino. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hey Coach Tony. As you heard from our, our buddy Dave Baltrus, who just did a nice voiceover for us, I'm your host, Tony Fiorino. And uh, I want to wish you all a very happy St. Paddy's Day. Uh, as you know, each week here on Hey Coach Tony, we tackle the hottest topics in youth sports. And we always want to hear what you got to say. So we've opened up the studio lines at 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. Adam is waiting in the wings for your calls. And I think this week uh, should be kind of fun. Um, for those of you who follow me on Facebook at HeyCoachTony.com, you'll know that this week we, uh, we, we pointed to an article that was written by Brooke DeLench. Brooke is the founder of MomsTeam.com. Great site, uh, tons of good information. Brooke wrote a piece that was entitled something along the lines of um, 20 questions, the top 20 questions that you'd like to, that you need to ask your coach, <clears throat> your kid's coach. Well, I'm not sure if there are necessarily 20 of them, and a lot of coaches cringed when they heard 20 questions, but in any event, some of this stuff was really good. And, and joining me in studio this morning to discuss and debate and tackle some of these questions is none other than Mr. Timothy Murphy, who is the track and field coach at New Fairfield High School. Um, hey, Tim, thanks for joining us this morning. How you doing? Thanks, Tony. I'm uh, doing great, man. And, and no, no, no one better to join us on St. Patty's Day than Timothy Murphy. <laughs> And I will be using my horrible Irish brogue throughout the show this morning, so be sure to call us at 855-HEY-COACH. But what I want to do, uh, without giving any opinions first, is I'm going to run down this list, and, and then we're going to take your calls at 855-439-2622. We'll also get some of your emails. I got some good ones in during the week. Um, let's just kind of get through this. Like I said, these, these are going to be in no particular order. Um, but I'm just going to run through the questions, and then as you have thoughts, please give us a call at 855-HEY-COACH. First question, <clears throat> and these are all questions that you should ask your kid's coach before the season. Number one is, how much training do you have? For example, do you have a coach's license or a certificate? Two, and by the way, these are all online as well at HeyCoachTony.com if you can't follow along with me. Number two, will a properly equipped first aid kit be brought to all practices and games and for contact sports like football and lacrosse, have you received training in the evaluation and management of concussions? Number three, will an automatic external defibrillator and someone with up-to-date certification and training in first aid, sports safety, and the use of an AED be present at all practices and competitions? Number four, will someone with a cell phone be at all practices and games who can call 911 if necessary? Number five, do you have an emergency medical plan in place? And if so, who will be responsible for calling the EMTs if it is necessary? Number six, what's the league's policy regarding minimum playing time? Number seven, what is your policy, coach, uh, regarding playing time? Number eight, what should we do as parents if we notice our child is not getting the minimum playing time. Now, in advance, I will not take any calls from someone who says, just shut up, I'm the coach. <laughs> Number nine, what tournaments are you planning for the team, and how much are they going to cost? Number ten, will you be in contact with parents during the season to give progress reports? Number eleven, what is the best way to contact you? Number twelve, what type of volunteer help do you need? Thirteen, will you agree to set clear boundaries to prevent the possibility of abuse or harassment? Number 14, do you follow a two-adult rule to eliminate the possibility of sexual abuse? Number 15, will you agree to not allow hazing or bullying of athletes? 16, if you cannot make the game, will you let us know who is going to be the coach? Number 17, what's your policy regarding missed practices or games? In other words, what, circ what circumstances is it acceptable for us to miss a game, like a family wedding or vacation, what have you? Uh, 18, do you plan to emphasize having fun and skill development? And if not, why not? 19, will you agree to never emotionally abuse players, such as by angrily yelling at players for making mistakes? And number 20, <clears throat> will you agree to respect officials and not, for example, angrily yell at officials for making what you believe to be bad calls? Um, if you have any general reactions to the list or anything specific that you want to chime in on this one, like I said, the list is up on HeyCoachTony.com. Uh, or if there's anything you want to clarify for us, give us a call. It's 855-HEY-COACH. That's 855-439-2622. Um, 
Adam may chime in with a couple of things as well uh, during the course of the show. But I'm going to start by turning it over to our esteemed guest, Mr. Tim Murphy from New Fairfield High School. Um, and let's just go through these one by one, if we can. Again, the uh, studio lines are open at 855 Hey Coach. First question, and this is everything from youth to high school. Um, I'm not sure how this first question plays. How much training do you have in terms of uh, certificates or licenses? I think as a high school coach, um, uh, some of it may come back to who are you as an athlete prior to being a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I was a college athlete. I was a high school athlete. Um, I did a number of different things that allowed me to have some basis of knowledge as far as being a coach. But right now I'm a uh, veteran of 25 years. Wow. I've been coaching since 1988, about three years removed from being a high school athlete. Uh, college athlete uh, out in Texas and then transferred over to Southern Connecticut State. And then from there, uh, it's basically my own personal experience that allowed me to get started in the, in, the, in the venue of coaching. Were you a track guy at Southern Connecticut? I was a track guy up there for uh, Coach Will Wright back in the day. And um, now what's back in the day, i got to ask you? Uh, for me, it's back in the uh, mid-'80s, mid-late-'80s. Now, I got it. See, now here's where you find out how small the world is. Did you know any of the football players at Southern Connecticut? Uh, actually, I'm in a fraternity, so a couple of those guys are in a fraternity. Did you know Charles Lawson by any chance? No. Uh, Charlie Lawson was my buddy. We played football together in high school, and he went to Southern Connecticut. He was right. a fullback. Good guy. Charlie, if you're listening, hope everything's going great. So back to the training. What you're saying, I guess, is at the high school level, um, as a parent, are you saying you'd be more interested in what the guy played versus, let's say, their certificates or licenses? If I'm uh, if I'm recruiting somebody to to be a coach, I really want somebody that uh, understands the game. And the only way to understand the game is to actually be a veteran of the game. Mm -hmm. You can't just walk <clears> in and uh, wish you played basketball in high school or, or college and and try to coach all the kids. I think a lot of parents who come out and be coaches they live vicariously through their kids because they watch the game on TV and it's not quite the same. No, because if you watch the game on TV, you'll think that that uh, Lehigh is a better team than Duke. <laughs> well, you might you might say that. And, uh... Last night they were. <laughs> Well, you know, I got to tell you, I, at, at the highest levels, I think it's a fair question. I do. Um, at the same time, as you know, as a pragmatist, I, I think I don't think parents should necessarily hold their breath waiting for an impressive answer in terms of credentials, unless, of course, like you said, because I think the way you do credentials in my mind is someone who understands the game and has got somewhat of a track record of being able to deal with younger kids. Well, you got to understand the kids. <clears throat> uh, I mean, when I first started coaching, I, I was blessed. I had uh, I had the ability to coach two of my brothers. So uh, here I am, the head coach. Uh, I am not going to make any joke about <laughs> Irish Catholics and the amount of children you have, but you coach two of your brothers, not your sons. No, two of my brothers. And then 20-plus uh, <laughs> years later, I ended up coaching my son. Wow. And uh, everything in between was, uh, you know, kids that weren't, uh, weren't mine coming home and uh, dealing with the wrath at the end of the day. Unbelievable. Well, uh, by the way, I, I do think it's important to note that uh, Tim's son, TJ, He's a very accomplished track and field athlete. In fact, he is our Athlete of the Week, and we're going to get to that later. That's how uh, Coach Murphy and I got introduced, which is kind of cool. All right, the second question. Will a properly equipped first aid kit be brought to all practices and games, um, and have you received training in the evaluation and management of concussions? Concussions is a big one, especially at the high school level. I mean, what are your thoughts? Those aren't necessarily related, even though they're the same question. Tony, uh, concussions to me are a huge deal. I find that um, there's a practice that the – that the, the state uses that a uh, general practitioner can clear a kid with concussions. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I, you know, my background working in the hospitals and stuff like that on my, my night shift kind of thing, um, I think a kid that has a concussion should be cleared by a neurologist before they're allowed to come back. So not is, is that not the case? No. You know, today's day and age, you, you can be cleared by a general doc. That's going to be changed real with all the with all the concussion awareness stuff. A, I'm shocked that that's the case. B, I can't imagine that there are not going to be state associations that are going to change that really soon. I think with the rules being as new as they are, there's uh, there's always that trial and error position. You know, the kid gets but do a concussion. You want to be, do you want to be on the error side of a concussion? No, no, no. <laughs> no way. No. When I look at the pros and I see the amount of concussions that are taking these guys out permanently, and uh, I mean, you look at the most famous guys like a Troy Aikman. Um, you know, his, his career was ended because he got seven in a row, and that was at the NFL level. Who knows how many he had at the younger levels, you know, college and, and his, you know, the youth programs. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, and, I, I mean, this, this first aid thing, what, I mean, what would you tell a parent if, uh, if they asked you if there was a fully stocked first aid kit that's brought to every practicing game? When you, you look at a first aid kit, and what, what's really necessary is, is do you have Band-Aids, do you have bag of ice, do you have, uh, you know, an ace bandage? And really that's all a first aid kit is, is, is really necessary for. You, I can make a phone call right away and uh, have 911 called, and, and, you know, they'll respond within minutes to the, to the area. If I have an issue, 
you know, I'm going to wrap it up real quick if, say, there's a broken bone or something, and, you know, you're going to hold it in place and tell the kid not to move and try and yeah. calm him down. That's really your first aid kit. How, how do you react to a situation? Well, I'm glad you said that because I think all too often, um, and maybe this is just a misconception on the, on the part of the parents, but I, I think maybe they expect a little too much from the true first responder, which is the coach. I mean, I personally, you know, unless there's a life and death situation, I, I don't know. I don't necessarily know. Uh, you work in a hospital, so you may have a little bit more of an edge. But I don't know if I necessarily want my son's, you know, in-town lacrosse coach to try to diagnose and or do anything other than sit tight, call nine one one. So I think you're right. Band aids, you know, <clears throat> spitting bubble gum and an ace bandage and an ice bag. I think you're in good shape. Well, that's it. You don't want a coach touching a kid, especially if there's a head injury or a neck injury. Uh, you you really don't want to know, the coaches aren't the docs. No, and, and matter of fact, coaches <clears throat> leave themselves incredibly vulnerable to lawsuits if a kid is. I mean, it's sad and it stinks, but if you try to do more than you know, kiss the boo boo, <laughs> that's it. I, I think you could you could put yourself in some big trouble. You're in a world of hurt, Tony. A, a, absolutely, and I think again, th there are twenty of these questions, and I really uh, I really want to credit Brooke DeLynch for putting so much thought into putting this. I, I, I almost said exhaustive a list, but, and it is. But 20 questions is a lot. But, you know, they're all – you may pick six or seven of these things that are important to you because I will tell you this. If you ask any coach 20 questions in the preseason meeting, um, your kid's going to get cut. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get to number three because uh, there have been deaths associated with this. <clears throat> but the question is, will – and uh, basically, will a defibrillator and somebody with up-to-date certification and training um, be present at all games and practices? Now, I don't know if there are policies at the high school level – but, boy, you know, I, I, there have been kids who have, you know, basically dropped dead on a basketball court and an AED could have and probably would have saved their lives. Yeah. How, how, is, how is the Scholastic Association handling this one? thing is, Tony, if you're, if you're using an AED, you better know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, that, that's the yeah, you're not jump-starting your car. Yeah. And quite honestly, most people who work in, in, uh, in the athletics area, they avoid the hospital. So, you know, putting something that way together and, and putting it on a person, if you're not in a panic situation, you know, and somebody's turning blue on you they don't have a pulse – they might not put it on right. I, I couldn't agree. I'd, I'd be scared to death. But, again, I think it comes back to, and this is where Brooke brings up a great point. Uh, I think, or I would hope that, and if someone has the answer to this, please call us at 855-HEY-COACH. But I would hope that if a school is issued or any youth sports organization is issued or decides to go buy a, a defibrillator, I would assume barrier to entry of getting one of these is, you know, some kind of three-hour course that, walks you through exactly how this has to be done. And everyone has to be a card-carrying member of the I Know How to Use This Thing club before they can put it on a kid. But you know what, Tony, what I find, even in the world of um, medicine at the hospitals, um, you're doing CPR. If you do really good, effective CPR, which is probably your, your, your first-hand defense to a situation like that, the AED is really a secondary issue. Really? You know, if, you can get that C if you can get CPR <laughs> initiated right away and immediately and somebody on the field is, is calling 911, by the time they actually get there, the, the, you know, the EMTs will either decide to use one or continue the CPR because really an AED is ineffective if, if you don't have a pulse. All right. Well, all right. Listen, we're going through these 20 questions, and, and we're, we're burning right through it, and we're going to take your calls at 855-HEY-COACH. But I want to uh, – I alluded to the fact that uh, Tim's son, TJ, is our athlete of the week. And so before we get to Tim, I want to uh, let you guys know that this week's athlete of the week <clears throat> is sponsored by Molly Darcy's. Traditional Irish pub and grill uh, right in uh, Danbury. And i got to tell you, if there's one place you want to be today of all days, it is Molly Darcy's. They're located at 39A Mill Plain Road, right in the heart of Danbury. Call Molly Darcy's today at 203-794-0449 and finalize your plans for the biggest authentic St. Paddy's Day celebration in the entire state of Connecticut. With a traditional Irish menu... And entertainment all day long, including Irish dancers, pipes and drums, and the music of one Eamon O'Neill, who is apparently a very popular Irish singer. This is one St. Paddy's Day celebration you just do not want to miss. So head on down to Molly Darcy's of Danbury. Ask for Colleen, the manager, and uh, tell her coach Tony sent you. She is a, a doll of a lady and quite a cutie. But like I said, this week's Athlete of the Week is New Fairfield High School's own T.J. Murphy. Uh, and isn't it only fitting that Dad, uh, first of all, that a nice Irish boy is being honored on St. Paddy's Day. Um, I'm not going to ask you how many children you have. I know you're one of like 17 then in the true <laughs> Irish tradition. Uh, but aside from being a nice Irish boy, TJ uh, is also the son of proud coach Tim Murphy, our esteemed guest. And it's very unusual we have an athlete of the week, uh, the same week that we have his dad on the show as a guest. Uh, 
But before you start screaming nepotism, sit down and pay attention because the kid has got some serious accomplishments. And normally I will run through these, but I cannot pass up an opportunity from one proud papa to the next to allow Coach Murphy to take over. Tell us a little bit about what Tim's gotten accomplished in the past and what's going on with TJ now. Well, in the past, um, <clears throat> leading up into his senior year, he was a um, you know, runner-up in uh, the Connecticut State Opens last year as a junior in, in the pole vault in the outdoor season. Uh, he went all New England as a junior. So there's a lot of high expectations coming into his senior year. Uh, but this year, he's pretty much, he hasn't lost a thing. Um, he came in as a, if you don't understand anything about like a high jump or a pole vault, you know, your, your increases are, are minimal for, from season to season or year to year. But TJ jumped from a 14-foot jump to a 15-6 jump, which is enormously huge. That propelled him from uh, roughly about the top 100 in the nation to top 25 in the nation. Wow. And uh, a lot of coaches took a lot of notice, and um, he's done tremendously well. So leading up into, you know, his seasonal won everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, we, we can call the kid Flyboy. Uh, <laughs> because when you watch the kid jump, he just he basically flies over the bar. And uh, in the state of Connecticut, there's uh, there's no one even close to him. So he's as, top in the state? I was going to say, if he's top 20, 25 in the country, I assume unless there's some other freak of nature in Connecticut, he's top in the state. Tony, he's not only top in the state, he's number one in New England. That's I mean, awesome. All the New England states. And uh, he's, he's the number one jumper on the East Coast. And he jumped at Nationals last week, didn't he? He jumped at Nationals. And uh, this, this entire season, he's been coming in around 13 foot. That's, uh, that's where he begins his competition. Mm -hmm. Where in a local area, you know, the, the kids pretty much start at 8, 9, 10 feet. They, mm -hmm. they come in. This kid's coming in at, you know, he's not going to start coming in in the, in the spring at 14 feet. That's where he begins his competition. And There's no one in the state even coming close to that. Well, don't, don't forget the Dan and Dave story. Don't let him start too high because you're not allowed to back up, right? If I'm no, not no, no. Once that bar goes up, the bar stays. It yeah. only goes higher, right? Yeah. Well, I, I got to tell you, um, he, and by the way, tomorrow he's jumping at, or is it today? No, tomorrow morning tomorrow he'll be jumping where? up at uh, Yale New Haven, up in uh, Cox Cage. It'll be the last indoor uh, meet in, in, in uh, his career for his high school career. And wow. then uh, actually Monday morning starts outdoor season. <laughs> outdoor season. All right, man. Any Olympic dreams? No, well, that's his aspirations. And, well, uh, that's, that, is, that is something. And, and we are incredibly proud of TJ. And uh, as, a, as a dad of another TJ, I don't know how much you listen to the show. My son is also goes by TJ for Tony Jr. And I don't know if it's a Thomas Jonathan or Thomas Joseph or if it's a, or if it's a Tommy Jr. <laughs> Or Tommy Boy, whatever it is, but uh, T.J. Murphy, great job. We are all very proud of you. I do want to remind you that the uh, the Hate Coach Tony Athlete of the Week is sponsored this week by Molly Darcy's Traditional Irish Pub, located at 39A Mill Plain Road in Danbury. Um, I will tell you, the place gets mobbed every year. So I'm going to throw something out there and hope Colleen doesn't get mad. If you're online at Molly Darcy's and you've heard the radio transmission this morning, call Molly Darcy's 203-794-0449. And you know what? Tell Colleen that Coach Tony sent you, and I'll bet she bumps you to the front of the line. Uh, don't hold me to that. And uh, for those of you who are already drinking inside of Molly Darcy's, and it's 915, so someone's at least two Bloody Marys into the morning already. Um, don't get pissed at me. All right. Listen, they do have the number one St. Paddy's Day celebration in the whole state. They've got a great Irish menu. And remember, there's entertainment all day today, including uh, Irish dancers, pipes and drums, the music of Eamon O'Neill. I'm telling you, this is one St. Paddy's Day celebration you don't want to miss. So head on down to Molly Darcy's of Danbury and ask for Colleen. Um, remember, if you want to nominate somebody for Athlete of the Week, just shoot me an email at heycoachtony at gmail.com. Or go up on HeyCoachTony.com and post it on the Facebook page. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're with Hey Coach Tony. I uh, want to remind you that the show is now being carried live on iHi.com. So if you just go to HeyCoachTony.iHi.com, you can hear the show live anywhere in the country. That's I-H-I-G-H. -H. Uh, I want to thank them for supporting the show. We're talking this morning with Coach Tim Murphy from New Fairfield High School, and we're going through this list of 20 questions that MomsTeam.com posted up there. I'm going to jump right back into it because some of these are pretty quick to burn through. Um, the, the question number four was, will somebody with a cell phone be at all practices and games who can call 911 if necessary? Now, I, I don't know about you. you know, th this day and age, who doesn't have a cell phone? Everybody, I mean, in, everybody and their grandma's <clears throat> got a cell phone. Actually, days. everyone and their granddaughter. I mean, I, I, my, my little one, all her friends, they all have cell phones. Right. So, I mean, it's... I mean, don't get me wrong. Good question to ask. You know, Tony, uh, about 20 years ago, before the cell phones really took effect, and you were lugging around those giant clunkers that were like in a, uh, a lunchbox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I tried to get the school system to put up uh, pay phones. Well, you can't find a pay phone anymore because everybody's got a cell phone. In fact, yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's so much <clears throat> in the way of cell phones, you can't even find a landline. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, it, it, it's uh, again, I think it's always a fair question. 
Um, and by the way, if you're a coach, just always have one with you. I mean, I don't. It's I don't, almost can't a requirement. Really... I just wish the schools would pay for it, but they don't. Eh, they should just to make sure. But yeah. all right. The other one is: uh, Do you have a mer- an emergency medical plan in place? And if so, who's responsible for calling the EMTs? Now, this is actually something most adults don't even think about. Um, and I think it's actually a great thing to have in place. And I mean a medical plan because think about this: when a true emergency, and not, we're not talking about <clears throat> even a broken bone necessarily, but a true emergency. Kid hits the deck, you don't have an AED. Right. Um, what, what, what's the first thing most people do? Panic. Exactly. Panic. <laughs> most right, people, I ask that question, most people go, well, they'll call 911. No, they will absolutely soil themselves in a panic mode. And the reason you need to, and this is a great one. Brooke, if there was one on this list that jumps off the page at me as really great, this is the one because it, it, most people will go into panic mode. So having a very strict protocol where there is – an A, a B, and a C line of defense to call 911. Um, even if one or two of those people panic, somebody is just going to remember, oh, call 911 first, throw a blanket on the kid. You know, all these things that you would put, elevate the head, whatever it is right. you want to do, it is good to have that plan in place because do you, no one has bad intentions. Do you want a kid to potentially, you know, kick the bucket because you panicked? No. I, I personally, I, I couldn't live with myself. And I think, Brooke, again, that's a great one. Um, right, the next two are kind of intertwined, and they are what is the league's policy regarding minimum playing time, and what is your policy regarding playing time? I'm you know, going to let, let you hit that one, Tim. Tony, on, uh, in track and field, there really isn't any playing time. I mean, uh, in tra- you, know, you, you run a race, you line the kids up, and off they go, and, and uh, there's no real even varsity or JV. You know? Basically, in track and field, varsity and JV is determined by your place in the, in the race. So if you want to do better, you want to get on varsity, you've got to win the race, or you've got to be in the top three, at least in, as a finish. But when you're at the high school level, I mean, a lot of us have pay to play. Um, so a lot of parents feel that their kids are entitled to that uh, playing time. But, um, you know, at the next level, there is no entitlement to playing time. And I think the kids need to learn to get used to that. And I, and I think the parents are allowed to feel entitlement. Here's where I think, and here, let me explain. You're looking at me like i got two heads. Let me explain to you what I'm saying here. <laughs> um, I think what's important, it's imperative that the coaches do, is discuss their own personal philosophies at that preseason meeting. So you can come in with a sense of entitlement. Sure. You can even say, I'm paying to play. And then what you can answer them in a nice way is, no, you're paying to be on this team because but, you made it. But I think, Tony, a, a good coach is going to set themselves up with, um, you know, say take basketball, for instance. And I'm not a basketball coach. But you got, uh, you know, you got 15, 20 games that you're playing a season, depending on which league you're in. But then you got preseason, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you got the JV, the JV levels. You got a varsity kid that's, he belongs <clears throat> on a varsity team, but, doesn't really belong on a JV team. And he, you know, he's, he's in an intertwined uh, sure. in that position. There are certain games, no doubt, that that kid could be in a little bit more than he should be. A- absolutely. And I think and the I, coach needs to recognize that. Well, and here's the difference, because a lot of people said questions six and seven are the same, but they're not. One is what's the league's policy. One is what is your policy. And I'll explain to you why that's important. If you're going to ask both these questions, and this one's geared to the parents, be very careful if you're going to ask both of these questions, because there is an underlining insinuation here that you as the parent are expecting the coach and you're holding them to a higher standard. You're expecting them to hold it to a higher standard than the league is. And that's a very tough message to deliver. And I'm not saying it's not fair to hope or even expect that, but just be ready as a parent for how that second question is going to be perceived by the coach. Think about if someone just said, what's the league's minimum playing time? And you go through a nice answer about that. And the next, very next question is, now what's your policy? Right. Party is going to jump back and get a little defensive and say, well, okay, great. Here we go. Problem parent. But let me ask you, Tony. Do you remember <clears throat> who won every you know, NFL game at the Super Bowl, or who was the, who was the team that lost? Do you remember who won the you know the, the the NBA playoffs and who lost? Chances are probably not. That's why there's sports trivia. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, uh, the general person's not going to remember who won and lost from the year prior. Mm-hmm. You know, what I tell a lot of the parents, I said, listen, this is seniors. You know, a lot of the seniors really need to have their time because this, this is their time. This is really the time that they got to go. Yeah. And you take those chances, you take that risk. If you lose the game, you lose the game. You know, but it's not the end of the world. You know? Now, let's just jump right into what do you do as a parent if you notice your kid's not getting the minimum playing time? What would you suggest a parent does? Well, you know what? I, th- I, I think there's, uh, you know, and I, I have to actually sit on that, uh, that fine line myself with my own kids. Um, number one, you're going to tell the kid, you've got to bust your home <clears throat> in practice. You can't take the day off. You know, you can't, can't lally-gag around. You've got to, you really got to step your, step your game up if you want to play. Um, otherwise, you know, maybe the parents should think a little bit closely as to whether or not their kids should really be playing the game that they're in. Maybe they're, maybe that's just not their gig. I, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. Some parents live vicariously through their kids. 
And again, as a, if I'm going to throw a piece of tactical advice out there for the coaches, it is to remind the parents of it's, it sounds corny. It's becoming cliched because I talk about it all the time. Um, if you do have a beef <clears throat> or if you've noticed something that is in violation of a league rule for minimum playing time, do not ever – Right after the game, walk up to the coach with your written spreadsheet in your hand. Right. Take take the 24-hour rule, and I would start that conversation in a very humble manner with coach. You probably don't even know this, but you know what? I had to deal with my pain-in-the-butt kid last night right. because guess what? He didn't get his two innings in the field and his one at bat. A coach is going to take that a lot better. <clears throat> and, again, I think any time you, you address playing time, because it is the number one beef between players, parents, and coaches, oh, yeah. just be sensitive about it. All right, next question. Uh, what tournaments are you expecting? Actually, you know what? I- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to this one after the break because i got a little story on this one that I want to hit. Uh, if you want to chime in on this one, by the way, it's 855-HEY-COACH. It's 855-439-2622. But the, uh, the question we're going to address when we get back is, what tournaments are you planning for the team, Coach, and how much are they going to cost? So before we go to break, uh, uh, you guys have been listening to me talk about how we're sponsoring a runner in the New York City Half Marathon. Uh, which, uh, by the way, is taking place tomorrow. We're working with the Boomer Esiason Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Well, tomorrow is indeed the day. Our own beloved Mrs. Hey Coach Tony will take to the streets of Manhattan tomorrow and run 13.1 miles on behalf of Team Boomer and Team Hey Coach Tony. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say how proud I am of her and how much I love her. Uh, I also want to say thanks again to the sponsors and the supporters of this show who stepped up and, uh, and helped her blow past uh, her personal fundraising goal for this amazing and important cause. Uh, so once again, thanks to our friends at SportsSignUp.com, Pomodoro Restaurant in uh, Greenwich, the Outdoor Sports Center in Wilton, and last but not least, our great friends at Catamount Ski Area, who stepped up big time, even during, I guess, what can only be described as probably the worst ski season in the history of <laughs> Northeast skiing. And we all giggle about it because it's just been that horrible. But um, I do hope... We can all take advantage of uh, the great fun at Catamount when they open up the Zipline Park and the Aerial Adventure Park uh, pretty soon coming this spring and summer. And for the many individuals who, uh, who came to the fundraising site and, and gave what they could, our most sincere thanks. Uh, every dollar truly goes to a great cause. So, again, the New York City Half Marathon is taking place tomorrow morning. And if you're there and you see a really cute little lady wearing a Hey Coach Tony t-shirt, tap her on the shoulder and uh, and, and uh, give her a loud shout out of a go, Mrs. Hey Coach Tony. I'm sure it'll help her finish strong. All right, you're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. I'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony on ESPN Radio and uh, – possibly even on iHide.com. We started carrying the show this week. Uh, we are addressing uh, the top 20 questions you should ask your kid's coach before the season begins. And right before the break, I alluded to something, uh, which is I think I thought at least was a really good question. Uh, what, what tournaments are you planning for the team to enter and how much are they going to cost? You would just think, really simple question. And I wasn't even going to address this, but then uh, I was reminded that uh, there is – you never think you would throw a caution to this simple question. But having said that, um, one of my children plays on, well, actually, they all play on very competitive teams, but at one parent meeting, <clears throat> we were being addressed by the coach, and we were talking about um, tournaments that we were going to enter and asking parents' input. And I got to tell you, if you're asking parents' input, shut up and listen to parents' input, by the way. So mm-hmm. we were told that the, 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 these kids were going to play in the State Cup tournament. And if you're like me and you've been around incredibly competitive sports all your life, you know that something that sounds prestigious isn't always prestigious. Right. Right? So one of the early questions from one of the parents was, you know, how many teams are in it? And uh, the coach's answer was honest. It was just, we just don't know. You know, it's too, it's too early. Right. It all depends on who registers. So all, I simply asked the question, which was, um, if there are only three or four teams that register for this, you know, why would we want to do that? Right. And – Guess what the coach said? Coach didn't say anything. You know why? Because the team mom, of all people, jumped in and snapped at me like I asked her if she ever dated her brother (laughs) and gave me one of these, do you have any idea how prestigious the state cup is? And now here's the problem because I felt like (laughs) I I can't use the the phrase I want to use, but let's just say (laughs) I was going to bite her head off. Problem was her horrible attitude came in front of the kids. Right. And the other parents. So while I was rather insulted that it happened in front of the parents, I was embarrassed for her that it happened in front of the kids. But the point being this, when you're talking about these prestigious events, uh, let me ask you a question. If the State Cup has two teams 
Guess what? Call it the Galaxy Cup. Call it's it not, the Universe Cup. It doesn't mean a thing. It's not prestigious. It's not the prestige. And you've probably shown up at events um, with TJ where before you started paying the money, I know you got to pay to go to some of these things yeah. now. Some of these local things that were touted as the big meat, tell me you never showed up to one of them like, wow, what a waste of our time. Oh, you do it all the time. You do it all the time. And even if you do the research on the computer, which we do, and we try to hunt down – uh, past results, prior results, and we, we go two, three years deep to find out what kind of competition is actually going to show up. Uh, you have to. Otherwise, you – and again, I coach the Bayside Yankees, which is a nationally ranked program, and we get invited all the time. to. We could do a tournament to a weekend if we wanted to. Yeah. We are very particular about not wasting our time. You just don't want to do that. So, again, while I think this is a great question, and Brooke, again, you're a super smart lady, and I, and I think it's a great question, but just as always – if you're going to ask about this, be careful of the idiot team mom. <laughs> I oh, guess yeah. it's the only way I would, I, would, yeah. I would throw that one. Because some people are just super defensive about the tournaments they think they should go to. Right. Anyway, we're going to get on to the next one. Uh, and this one's okay. Uh, will you be in contact with parents during the season to give progress reports? What do you think about that one, Coach? Well, I think it's awesome. Uh, first of all, it opens up a, a good line of communication. I mean, I, I make my, uh, my personal email, my cell phone, and uh, the home phone is, is very accessible to, to parents. On, on top of that, I never ignore a parent when they come up and, and talk to me. Cause Even right after a meet? No, I don't mind. You know, well, for me, track and field is, is a gentleman's sport. You know, it's it's not one of those sports where you got a lot of referees and you're going to rip somebody's head off. You either run fast or you uh, don't. You know, okay, you know? you're so right. I, you're so right. I luck out that way. I get lucky. I get lucky. That's why you um, got a smile on your face. Usually a guest comes in here and they're gritting their teeth and they're nah. grabbing the mic with both hands. <laughs> but even when I coach uh, youth youth football and I coach my little guy in youth football, you get some parents that, uh, you know, they live on uh, – when, when, when you coach them from behind the sidelines, it's it's great to be a, you know, what do they call a Sunday morning coach. Sure. Um, and uh, we I always say, well, all right, if you can do the job better, here's the whistle, here's the thing, here's the clipboard. Go ahead, be my guest. I'll, I'll stand behind you, and I'll give you the same wrath that you're giving me. Well, and and that's why it is a truly thankless job. And I got to tell you, um, you know, what, my buddy Steve Kolitz, who is a, a very well regarded uh, official in multiple sports, he chimed in with this one on email and said, uh, you know, nice idea. Um, I suggest the parents come watch and chat with coaches before and after the practices and the games. And again, track is one thing. Most sports are very very different oh, no, because I, again, Steve. My friend, you have a great radio voice. You're very smart, and I think you're a great official. Stick to your day job, guy, and don't go into the sports parenting business. Because if you invite a parent to talk to you right after the practice yeah. about progress, guess get, what if you think, because guess what, they, when they say progress, what do you think they really mean? Why isn't my kid playing more? Oh, it's exactly and, what they're saying. And if you get roped into the wolf in the sheep's clothing in the form of that question, can we have a progress report? Yeah. No. What they're saying is, can I chew you out for about 15 minutes, even though you want to go home to your family, and we'll talk about why your perspective on my kid is off base? So, again, I think the idea of progress reports is a great idea if you're truly interested in them and if you set up a plan with the coach on how they're going to be done. And that emphasis, I should say, that onus falls on the coach. I'm sure. all for progress reports, and I think they're vital. But you better make sure, because I will tell you this, good for you, my home phone number goes to nobody. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> I hid. My, my, you cannot find my home phone number. I know which one I find when I, when I give my number stuff out. I, I barely ever get contacted. Again, mate, track is the magic pill in, in, the, in the world of sports parenting is what I guess. Because, again, you're right. What's someone going to argue? He didn't run a – you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was not a 4840. It was a 47. No. It, right. it, it, here, here's the number. You can't right. lie. And it's and even better now because we don't even use a stopwatch anymore. We have fully automatic timing. So <laughs> someone else – is sitting at the finish line, and it's on a camera. Yeah, you're, the camera you're, doesn't lie. You know what? You're the worst guest I've ever had on the show. <laughs> I, just want you, I just want you to know that. All right, listen. Um, yeah, we got time for a couple more before the break. Uh, and this, well, Actually, this one could be kind of fun. The next question is, what's the best way to contact you? Well, if you run track at New Fairfield, uh, you can have his address, his phone number. <laughs> He'll tell you where his other kids go to school. <laughs> and I don't shy away from uh, you know visiting the establishments in town. I mean, if you want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me. This. I'm pretty visible. No, and I got to tell you, I joke, but that is very commendable. And again, I think part of it is the nature of the beast. And, sure. I, and I think you do have, you know, it is a gentleman's sport. Any timed sport, I think, does kind of fall under that category. And really, the only timed sports are really, um, in the true sense, are, are the track and field events. Or again, if I, throw the, if I throw the javelin and it sticks in the ground, what are you going to do? Argue with the tape measure? You uh, really can't. No. Nope. Um, but I will tell you this as a coach, you better be really specific on this one because the best way. And that's the question. The best way to contact you isn't just about email and phone numbers. It is if you have preferences in terms of where and how as well, sure. uh, you, you better spell those out. So you, know, you go back to that 24-hour rule, but here's another one. You know, I tell all my, my parents, um, especially when I was coaching at the youth level, 
if you bump into me at the drugstore or, or at the nursery or at the massage parlor, whatever it's going to be, um, we are not, not, not ever going to talk about sports. Right. Or I should say, we're not, we'll talk about, you want to talk about the Yankees? Great. We are not going to talk about the kids. Right. Because especially in town, or if you live in New Fairfield, let's mm -hmm. say, um, which uh, if, you need, if you need it, uh, Coach Murphy's address is going to be posted on <laughs> HeyCoachTony.com. Um, but if you live in the same town, and a lot of youth, I'd say most youth coaches do, you don't want to get blindsided. You know, if you're at Applebee's with your kids, no, right. you, you, you don't want someone to start talking about playing time. So I think that's a great question. And, Brooke, that was another one that's near the top of the list. The best way to contact you, really, really spell that out. And, by the way, parents, you better really be respectful of what that coach tells you. Um, all right. What, you know what, know what I got to do? I was hoping to get a call from uh, Jeremy McConnell, who is the coach of uh, Newtown Girls Varsity Basketball. Um, Here's what we're going to do, because guess what? We had an athlete of the week. This week especially, we also have a team of the week. So uh, the, the Hey Coach Tony team of the week is brought to you by our friends at, if you haven't been here, you better go. It's called the One-Eyed Pig in Newtown, Connecticut. When I heard One-Eyed Pig, um, I thought they were talking about my high school prom date. But anyway, bada-bing, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I'm just here for my own amusement, Coach. All right. Uh, you guys really, if you've listened to the show, you know how much I love barbecue, and I have been looking for a place in Connecticut to call my own. Well, I found it. One-Eyed Pig in Newtown, Connecticut. It's uh, at 71 South Main Street. For those of you who know Newtown, it's in Ricky's Plaza, just one mile south of the flagpole in Newtown. Uh, it is the coolest barbecue joint in Connecticut. Rather than try to be uh, a St. Louis or a Carolina or a Texas-style barbecue place, one-Eyed Pig simply took the best of each style of barbecue and combined them to create what they call Connecticut-style barbecue. It is the most unique barbecue menu you're going to find anywhere. They do catering, including full pig roasts. They'll do the pig roast on site, or they'll even bring the pig roast to you. So call One-Eyed Pig today at 203-270-0391. I was just in there this past week, and I got to sample their, uh, their four homemade signature sauces, and... Uh, they have such unique dishes, something I never had before anywhere, that they call wackadoo barbecue. Um, it's like a mixture of pulled pork, apple smoked bacon, and it's on top of patty of like um, hash brown fries. It is the sickest thing I've wow. ever had. It's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Um, I'm telling you, One Eyed Pig is going to have you coming back time and again. So this week, uh, now that I'm starving, we're highlighting the girls' varsity basketball team from Newtown High School. I can hear the applause in the background. The girls, led by Coach Jeremy O'Connell, who really let me down and didn't call this morning, uh, they knocked off the number one seed, Danbury, uh, in the quarterfinals, and then they beat four-time defending champions Hillhouse High School of New Haven after trailing by 15 at the half. Now, this put Newtown into the state finals, which, was, uh, which were played last night at Mohegan Sun. And guess what? They won. I, I could not – I mean, I don't want to go so far as to say Cinderella story, but hats off to this amazing group of young ladies led by Coach Jeremy O'Connell from, uh, from Newtown High School. Uh, we are very excited to have you guys as our Hey Coach Tony team of the week, and I hope Coach reminded you guys to turn on the Internet and, and listen to some Coach Tony goodness while you're all sleeping off the celebration party from last night. Now, I want to remind you that Hey Coach Tony's team of the week has been brought to you this week by our friends at One-Eyed Pig Barbecue in Newtown, Connecticut. They're at 71 South Main Street in Ricky's Plaza, just one mile south of the world-famous flag, uh, flagpole in Newtown. It is the coolest barbecue place in Connecticut. It's open seven days a week. One-Eyed Pig, by the way, longtime proud supporter of many youth and high school sports in Utown, uh, Newtown. In fact, one of the coaches told me that they regularly hold meetings there. It's a great atmosphere for families as well as adult social gatherings. They got live music every Thursday through Saturday. And uh, one thing to remember, children, because this is a cafe place, and what that means is kids under 21 have to be accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. So call One-Eyed Pig today, 203-270-0391, and get yourself ready for some serious Connecticut-style barbecue. And, and uh, whatever you do, make sure you tell them Coach Tony sent you. You want to nominate somebody for coach, team, or athlete of the week? Shoot me an email at heycoachtony at gmail.com and make a case for yourself. Let's see if we can get you guys on the air. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony. Stick around. I'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're having some fun this morning with Coach Tim Murphy from New Fairfield High School, and we are going through the various questions that you could or, in some cases, should ask your kid's coach before the season starts. And I want to remind you all that this list comes to us courtesy of Brooke DeLench, founder, editor-in-chief for uh, from MomsTeam.com. It's a great site. And um, I'm sure um, 
she she got very detailed in this list for purposes of making sure you have all the ammunition you need. I poke a lot of fun at Brooke because I like her. Very smart lady. Uh, and we, uh, listen, we agree to disagree on certain things. Now, listen, we're going to get, I'm going to burn through some of these because we're nowhere near, I think we're only up to number 12. So I'm going to buzz through some of these that just are, are the gimmies. For example, number 12 says, what type of volunteer help do you need? Great question to ask, but I got to tell you, as, as, a, as a coach, even if that question is not asked, I would caution every coach to tell the parents the following. I will let you know if and when I need help from anybody. Because Absolutely. a lot of coaches have gone through the, hey, coach, let me help you with the bags. And the next day, uh, let me help you with the bags. And, uh, hey, the kids look really good. And then by the fourth practice, let me tell you why my son should be starting at shortstop. That's right. Be very – that is one of the <laughs> absolute you know, parent traps uh, yeah. in, in youth sports parenting. And if you're a coach and don't know that one, courtesy of Coach Tony, free of charge. All right. Um, number 13, I love Brooke, and, uh, but this is just a dumb question, but probably worth asking. Will you agree to set clear boundaries to prevent the possibility of abuse or harassment? Tim, how many coaches are going to say, nope, I think abuse and harassment is a great thing, and it's part of building character, even if they mean that? And I know there are coaches who are bordering on abusive, and some of them are, sure. uh, but nobody's going to come out and say, no, I, I, I'm, I'm a big, proud supporter of abuse. It's just not going to happen. I, and, uh, you know, I, I think there's different levels of that. Um, I mean, if you watch me coach in the heat of the moment, you're screaming at the kids, but it's not necessarily that you're screaming at the kid. You're screaming to cheer the kid on to, you know, get them to rise to the next <clears throat> level because you want them to do better, not uh, not break them down and, and make them feel horrible about something. And, and, again, it goes back to intentions. And, again, some people are wrong, but even if, like I said, even if I'm the worst coach in the world mm – -hmm. And someone asks me, are you going to set boundaries to prevent the possibility of abuse or harassment? Who's going to say no? All right, right. So, again, I get the point, but all right, never mind. Next one is, do you follow a two-adult rule to eliminate the possibility of sexual abuse? Um, on this one, I got an email from Jack in Waterbury, and he said, hey, Coach Tony, regarding question 14, uh, I would make sure as a parent – uh, to start by explaining that such a rule exists because there are plenty of people, including coaches, who don't know that, and, and you don't want to embarrass the coach, especially in front of other parents. Now, that's a great point. Um, all right. I, I, I can't say this on the air, and so I'm not going to, but I, I got another email on this exact question. And if, if anybody is really interested in hearing uh, probably the most tasteless joke I, I've ever heard in my life <laughs> – E e email me, and, and I'll see if I want to send it to you. And so the guy who emailed it to me, if you're listening, I, I can't read it on the air. I'm going to get fired. And, has to, and, and you can fill in the blanks on this one, all right? Um, uh, I, am a clear, I, I am so against any abuse of any t uh, type towards a kid. And if you remember the Penn State st uh, scandal, the Syracuse scandal, I was outwardly outspoken about how these people are all going to end up in hell. Uh, they should be hung. Uh, you know, having said that, I'm always up for a great joke. So I, I'll give you credit. Um, it was it was funny. If if this was a if this was a an XM radio show, I'd read that one on the air. So you get your props, all right? <laughs> um, let's get to the next one. Uh, by the way, the, the two adult rule simply means uh, a kid should never be alone somewhere with one adult. Oh, there should I, always be a and and by the way, and I, and I crucial. That's, that that's a great that's a great question. And um, you know, I, I I live with with the rules that uh, I don't go into a locker room at all. I really really don't. never. <clears throat> and I won't uh, I won't go into an office. Ever with a with with one kid or even never, an adult? Never, yeah, never close, no, never close no, the door. Never. And in fact, my office is outside on the track. My office is in the hallways of the school. <laughs> my office is where everyone can see me. If a parent wants to come and have a discussion, that discussion is going to take front take place in front of a lot of people. I I couldn't agree more, and it's a shame that it has to happen mm -hmm. because. But that's just it is what it is. All right, listen. Question number fifteen is along the lines of number thirteen, uh, which is, uh, will you agree to not allow hazing or bullying of athletes? Um, this one I got the most emails on this one, and I would say no less than 33 emails I got simply said, duh. <laughs> I mean, again, who's going to say, no, no, I, I think hazy and bullying is, is a good thing, and we're going to let that happen. It's just, come on. I, I think you should say, maybe I would just say, hey, coach, what do you think about bullying and hazing? And then you get them to say something. If you ask a yes-no question, and this goes back to my sales training, you never ask a yes-no question. Right. Just don't. All right, 16, if you can't make the game, will you let us know who's going to be coach? Um, I, I guess there's always an assistant coach or someone. Uh, mm -hmm. Decent question, not worth really d drilling into. And that's only in the interest of time, Brooks. So don't get upset with me. Uh, what's your policy regarding mispractices or games? In other words, when is it acceptable? Now, I know right now, as we speak, there are parents who are sweating bullets right now about the April vacation they plan on taking. Absolutely. And their kid plays varsity baseball yep. or softball or track or field mm -hmm. hockey. Do you have a policy in place about that? Well, really, we can put a policy in place at the high school level. 
because uh, the kids are entitled to that vacation. You can try and put one in, but good luck. <clears throat> Um, so you're not allowed to sit a kid for missing the game if he goes on vacation that week? You you can try. You can try. try. Well, in New York, I will tell you, it's a lot more strict. Right. I mean, coaches have a lot more leeway to say, get, I don't care what you do, we're practicing that week. In a lot of cases, you'll have you'll have games that week. Oh, Tony, it gets even worse for us because uh, we have track meets the day they come back. You know, so if you don't train for that week, you know, Shot. and 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 you're you know in track and field, we have five meets. You know, so it's not like playing baseball. You have 20 games. You you, you can sacrifice a game. You know, you can. You can't, you can't <laughs> sacrifice a, a track meet uh, when you're going up against four or five other teams on the same day. You know, you only have five weeks to get the whole league in, and that's it. And you got one shot to crack them. Yeah, and I, and exactly, and it's all qualifying base, mm-hmm. which is, and and I think it's important. Now, again, having said that, um, probably the best thing to do is that's something you should address. As if the coach doesn't address it. You, as a parent, better address that in the preseason meeting. And I know some of those preseason meetings are coming up, folks. So you make sure you talk about that April break and what the coach's policy is around mm-hmm. practices, games, and whether or not you are, quote, allowed to take vacation. All right, the next one, <clears throat> do you plan to emphasize having fun and skill development? We're not going to spend a lot of time on this one uh, because it depends on the level. Sure. I, don't, I don't know a lot of varsity coaches that say we're going to emphasize fun. and But you can emphasize development, but let's face it, the varsity level, if you're collecting a paycheck to coach, uh, you're, you're expected to win. Absolutely. And at the youth level, uh, it's a very fair question. And again, um, you may want to get specific and put some some uh, some metrics out there so you can hold someone's feet to the fire. Uh, here's another one. All right, will you uh, will you agree to never emotionally abuse players by angrily yelling at players for making mistakes? And I'm glad you said what you said before because this one is not cut and dry at all. Let me explain. And Coach Tim here uh, alluded to this. What I think is abuse. You may think it is is tough love. So here's what happens. You've got two different people hearing the exact same interaction on a field between a kid and a coach. One of them sees it as a good thing, and the other one has the league commissioner on speed dial trying to get the coach fired. Right. So you can't just go ask general questions about abuse. And, again, don't ask it as a yes-no question. You can say, what's your coaching style? Coach, heat of the moment. But that's Are you going to tell me you never yell at a kid? And I'm not, say, I'm not asking you that question. I'm saying if I'm the parent in that meeting, yeah. Coach, are you really telling me you never yell at the kids? Right. Tell, you know, give us an idea of your coaching style. That's a fair question. That might be the same parent that thinks their kid's going to go D1. You know, so how do you that parent? The you make it sound like there's one. And by the way, that, that, that's the same parent who thinks their kid's going to sign a multi-million dollar contract exactly after it. senior year. And let me tell you, they're not growing on trees. You know, especially around here. Uh, you know what? Not anywhere. I got to tell you, it, it's 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 a very rough rough go. Um, here's another one that I want to spend a little bit more time on, which is, and it's the last one. We made it. We made it through the list. All right. <laughs> Will you agree to respect officials and not, uh, for example, yell at them for making what you believe to be bad calls? <clears throat> I'll let you start. Well, I think um, you know, if you're a gentleman, uh, you can get caught up in the heat of the moment. You see a bad call, maybe the ref missed it, and you're going to get on them. Uh, there's just no way you're going to. But I think you're going to get a lot more respect from that referee. If you walk up to him at the end of the day and say, hey, I probably would have missed the same call. But then shake the guy's hand and say, I'll try to be nicer next time. <clears throat> but I think if you're one of, those, uh, one of those coaches that just totally loses their mind, and week after week you get the same ref. <clears throat> Sometimes we do when we're coaching youth football. You know, you're looking for that ref. You're looking to tear him apart from yep. the, the word go. Yep. But, uh, you know, they're out there doing a job, and they're trying to catch the calls. And, you know, if you call every single thing that goes on in a game, you know, you're nitpicking. That game's going to take you a week and a day to, to, to finish. So some things are going to slide. The real gross calls, really the ones that need to be called. Yeah, I, I coached fifth grade girls travel basketball this year. <clears throat> and it's funny to hear coaches argue calls. Cause, you know, and one guy finally said it. He said, if I call, he said what you said. If I call every foul and I call every travel, this game is going to end up to be a 4-2 to game. Right. And everyone's going to be miserable. Right. And he basically said, don't argue another call. I respected that. Because yeah. he basically said, I didn't blow the call, you idiot. I'm, I'm using some judgment right. in, in for the for the uh, you know for the level of play, and that varies, by the way, from in town to travel sure it does. to. By the way, you know we we did a part on the show where it, somebody told me that in a championship game they were making calls favoring the other team to make it even, and I was like, guy, I get that. Not in a tournament championship game, please. No, no, <laughs> no there's a place for everything. And again, I, I you know our friend Steve Cole, it's actually sent me a good note on this one as well when he emailed me because he's traveling this week. He was going to try to call in, but he, uh, that ain't going to work. Uh, his thought, his quote was, hey, Coach Tony, here we go. Good luck with this one. A well-mannered coach should harbor and insist on well-mannered players and parents. In all my years and thousands of games officiated, I've rarely seen variants to the following. Most of the time, a coach that is, let me say, a pain in the butt uh, 
shows to his kid and teaches them that it's okay to be rude, disrespectful, and unsporting to the officials. Sure. That harbors bad behavior from players and parents. Officials understand a coach uh, who's being tough on us. We welcome and understand coaching styles. Just keep the players and parents in line. That's a part of the job of the coach. Officials are instructed and pushing uh, that the head coaches be responsible for the actions of themselves, their assistant coaches, their players, and their, and their fans, period. Right. Uh, we will make them accountable to the point of ending games if issues, are not, if issues are not dealt with in a timely manner. On the other hand, the tighter the call, the more we allow and accept proper sporting reaction. That came straight from a very, very well-respected official, and I couldn't, I couldn't say it better. Um, and by the way, for, for parents, I think that one is, that is a very, very fair question. Now, uh, I got a couple of emails in general about the list, uh, and I will get to an email from, uh, we got Bill in Southbury. Hey, Coach Tony, I think it's important to say that all of this is well and good. It's also predicated upon how you deliver these questions. If you just jump in at the parents' meeting and start grilling the coach, as much as you're entitled to ask these questions, you will absolutely come across as the pain-in-the-neck parent and you'll put the coach on the defensive on the first day of the season. That's a good point. Let me just get to this last one here. We're actually running out of time. Uh, Tom in Richfield. Hey, Coach Tony, I think this is kind of ridiculous. A little over the top, don't you think? If parents expect volunteer youth coaches or even high school coaches who get paid dirt to be accountable to these standards, those parents better be ready to step up and put a whistle around their own neck. This is the reason good coaches are dropping like flies. Uh, Tom, great way to end the show. And Tim... Tim Murphy, uh, so good to have you, man. Uh, Thanks, best of luck to TJ uh, the rest of the way. I hope you come back and join us again. Folks, enjoy the rest of the weekend. We'll see you next week on Hey Coach Tony.